All right, everyone, got the old nausea cam going here today. And uh, we are gonna be taking a look at this old hay rake because one wheel, I believe, this wheel over here is acting like it's all majorly loose and wanting to fall off, which would of course be bad. So we gotta get this in the shop and I figure while we're at it, we will make some adjustments to the, you know, the raking part of the rake because I actually did buy a manual for this, an old manual out of the, I don't know, 1950s or 60s and I read it and it talks about some of the adjustments which I still have to make. So we're gonna do that, replace some teeth and hopefully get this thing back in more usable-ish condition. Now, partially just for the sake of making things interesting and partially because the Kubota's in the shop, I figured we would make use oh, of the WD-45 Alice here. Have not started this thing in uh, probably about 10 days or so. I've also not released a parking brake in that time. There we go. That's probably neutral. It has a carburetor, so therefore the carburetor needs to be adjusted. All right, let's see. Yonderwards and down. That should be reverse. Yep. Come on miles of play in this clutch. Still got to adjust that. Should always hold on to the steering wheel just in case. Now nah, we're in neutral. Oh yeah, I remember. I think when I put in the new valve and the new fuel line, I I only poured in a little bit of gas because I was afraid it was going to leak and luckily it never evidently did. Of course I forgot to put more in. In a related matter, I don't have much more to put in. Hard to keep stocked up on gas when you drive a diesel and the tractor you regularly, all the tractors you regularly use are diesel. So. That was a quarter so. Hopefully that gets this thing into the shop. <laughs> I know it's a pretty small tractor, but evidently under load, this thing will actually consume a greater quantity of fuel than my newer 70 horsepower diesel tractor. You know, the kind of one being carbureted and the other not. Oh no. No. We're not on level ground. Ah, shoot. I can't really leave because the shop's opened up. Oh boy. You know guys, life is an interesting thing. It'll take you lots of places you never expected or ever thought that you'd go. For instance, this morning, you know, when I got out of bed today, I wasn't expecting to try my hand at breaking the world's slowest record for moving a hay rake from point A to point B. But here we are. All right, I'm back from town. Oh boy, you know, I really like to think most of the time I kind of have my ducks in a row, but days like today make me wonder. I just gotta Spill gas all over this thing and we'll be back in business. Oh no! Yeah. That's about as low of a percentage of gas I can spill with a, with a vent-free can. Now you just gotta wait all day for it to do its thing. The good news is the sun's so intense out here, this gas is evaporating pretty much instantly. You know what I do spill. Oh yeah, we're getting gas now. Good. One downside to these older tractors, you have to climb on from the back. Not the smoothest operation in the world, but honestly not that bad. Ah, shoot. Except, if <laughs> you forget to turn the gas on. Very nice, very nice. So unfortunately this thing is a little too wide to fit into the building. I could get it in here a few feet but then it's gonna hit the gantry, but that's okay. It's much closer to the building, so it's easy to access with tools, and I can even work on it mostly in the shade. So since I brought this thing up here for the sole purpose of figuring out why that wheel looks like it's about to fall off, guess we might as well mess with a bunch of other stuff first. For instance, this thing makes some pretty horrific noises while it's running, which I recently found out it's not supposed to. But we don't live in a perfect world. What seems to be happening is this, this bar here and this tooth are colliding. 
And that does not appear to be a bent tooth, which tells me this bar is in the wrong place. It needs to go that way. And in the manual for this, New Holland literally tells you to take a heavy pipe wrench and bend these as needed. Maybe like one more good shove. miss now except for this one tooth. So maybe it's the tooth that's bent. You know what actually I better make let's get a functional set of teeth on here before anything else because there's some really badly bent ones like uh, like this one right here. And, <laughs> and once those are on then we'll make sure it's not rubbing anywhere else. Kind of surprising I've already used this for basically two seasons and I haven't actually bothered to do this yet. So I think this is a really, really ingenious system. All that holds these on are these little keepers. This is one of the reproduction ones I have. The tine goes up, it goes around a carriage bolt, and I just put a little bit of anesthes on there. Then we got a uh, washer and a nut. I put the anesthes on there, so that way they'll come off a little easier next time. And it's amazing, you know, all these faded teeth, I've had these for a while, I just never got around to putting them on. I had a whole box of those. I don't remember how many was in the box, but I put them all on here and it's still missing a whole bunch of teeth and we still have a whole bunch more to change out. <laughs> it's a miracle this thing worked at all. What's amazing to me is that these things, even though they're spring steel, they actually do bend. Now this one here, it looks like it scrapes up against this bar. Sometimes there's some fresh wear here. Uh, so I wanna pull this one this way a little bit. My main concern doing this is one of these, especially one of these older ones, or well, the Chinese new ones, is gonna break and I'm gonna, you know, my arm's gonna go flying and I'm gonna impale myself on one of these. But it hasn't happened yet. Oh. Now it takes a lot of force to move one of these things and you have to bend it about 10 times as far as the point, the, chain, the amount of change you want. Mm. See look, it totally misses now by probably a quarter of an inch. Oh. Good, now it's missing by like an inch or more. And this one, and this one here is also pretty close, see that? So we're just going to... Now it misses by five-eighths of an inch. Oh. Now it misses by an inch or more. Ah. Make that one match a little bit. Oh, there's a major problem. Kind of wish I caught that one sooner. Watch this bar, see it move? This one's badly bent out of shape by a good inch and a half or so. So it's colliding. Oh, wow, that's already... I've only used it once, and you can see it's pretty much worn the head of that bolt down. Pipe wrench time. So I will say this is some very, very good steel they used on this. It seems quite resilient. That mixed with where this is like inside the frame of the rake means I can't really get the leverage I need on it to bend it. So we're gonna have to try and work with this in the shop. We'll see if we can get this glow in here pretty well and see if that works this rust loose. For those that don't know what we're doing, why heating stuff with the torch will usually, not always, but usually work to loosen it, is because things heat and cool at different rates, depending on their size, shape, and the amount of surface area they have. So therefore, since we cannot heat something like this 100% evenly, we're gonna get some expanding and contraction, some expanding and contracting, there we go. That's what happens when I try to sound intelligent. Uh, some expanding and contracting action here, and that's hopefully gonna break the bond of this rust. Got this whole thing glowing real well. It's out. 
You know, you guys will make fun of me for this, but I honestly did not even realize that these things are supposed to turn quietly. I had no idea. Got this camera in the shade here. I've not been around that many hay rakes at all, let alone ones of this style, and every single one of them I'd ever heard sounds like, uh, how, one of my viewers said it sounds like a hammer mill crushing alternators, I believe is how he described it, which is not entirely untrue. Uh, but I just, I figured that's how they were supposed to sound. It does not make a sound. Probably doesn't even squeak like, I'm guessing one of these little bearings in here does. But yeah, just super smooth as can be. And I was like, man, huh, how about that? Who knew? And there's really nothing to it other than, you know, just using the bubble wrench and bending stuff. Is there lucky? Now I will say, this is one of those deals where it's sort of like if you have, <laughs> if you wash your car or your truck or whatever, you don't actually realize you don't actually realize how dirty and nasty it was until you see it clean. This is like this, you know, I bought the first box of rake parts here a little over a year or so ago when I bought this rake because I, I knew obviously there were some damaged teeth, but I mean, look at all the ones that have paint on them and all the ones who don't. I didn't realize that probably like one out of four or in some places one out of three teeth on this thing were just completely missing or bent or broken off or whatever. I really had no idea it was this bad. It's just, you know, you, you look at it, unless you study it, you just see some missing ones here and there. So if you own one of these, especially because I figured out you can buy those replacement teeth for a little over a dollar a piece on the internet. Yeah, that seems to be the way to go. Now, I guess we might as well figure out what to do with that uh, wheel wobble. What do you think, Lucky? Say roof. Say roof. Yeah, that was a weak roof. That one's gonna leak. Come here, buddy. Say roof. Oh, that's a pretty good roof. I trust that one through a hurricane. <laughs>